five or six years ago, my um, we were gonna move to Texas for my dad's business thing. And um, he died in a car crash there. And my uh, mom kind of spiraled down with drugs and stuff. We went through years and years of neglect, abuse, and just never ever had like a full family. We never ever got the true feeling of what a family is about. After all those years, I finally called DCFS and asked them to see if they could come get me and my two little siblings, because the older siblings were gone. And so I made the call to ask DCFS to see if they'd take me and my two little siblings out of the foster care. When that happened, um, I went to my first foster family, the Cromars. And uh, while my little sister and little brother went to my dad's parents, the, the grandparents, because I didn't want them going to someone else's home and feeling uncomfortable and feeling, wow, am I gonna go anywhere else? Am I gonna stay here where I'm gonna go? I want them to feel like that I'm comfortable, this is where I'm gonna be from now on. I stayed a year or two and then I went to the Williams and I was there for almost a year. And it was one of my greatest years. I actually was starting to feel like a normal kid but I always felt like there's struggle still. Like my heart wasn't completely set on something right. And uh, then I met the girl Axe. I was at the park one day and I got called by my caseworker and she told me, Ecom or Michael, I have a family for you. They're great. Would you like to meet them? I'm like, yeah. And all I kind of remember is that I had this huge, huge smile on my face saying, oh my gosh, please, please be the family. And so the next day I woke up that morning, nervous, shaking, and getting all antsy. And as soon as we got there, I started shaking. And then my caseworker had to grab my arm saying, come on, you can do this. I was scared. But all I felt when I walked into the house was love. All I felt was my future and name a calling to me, saying that this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm going to be. I belong here and six months went by and I got adopted by them. There's a lot of things. You feel trapped, you feel you don't have freedom as much. You're like you're lacking of being a real kid. When you're in foster care, you feel like that you're gonna go somewhere else. You always, like you're always worrying about that. I'm gonna be in this family, then the next day watch, I'm gonna be in a different family. It's like, that's always on your mind. It builds stress, a lot of it because some of these families that you go into, you end up liking them. And then a day later, or maybe a month later, they're saying that I have to let you go. And sure, that's one of the hardest things is because you do love that family and stuff. But when you get adopted, all those things go away. You feel like that stress and sadness and everything that was keeping you back is now behind you. You feel like normal kid. You feel like going to school and seeing your normal friends every day. And even if you did live with that family that you were in foster care, you saw that one kid, like a brother. You see him at school, he's still your brother. He's still a part of that family. He's still in your heart. There were some challenges, definitely. Um, me trying to like get my feelings out. It was always easy, but um, what was hard is that I still always felt like it was my fault. And they, they often told me that it wasn't my fault. I've also had tons of talks with my dad, just me and him talking about it. What does it mean to have a dad you can talk to? It's great. It's, um, it's something that I missed after my dad died. We have this little uh, saying back together, like, you know the, <laughs> just practical jokes, really. Like, we love our jokes that we do, and we like making fun of each other and stuff, and difference, just, we have different personalities, but when we look at each other, our hearts are very much the same. <laughs>